Hey guys, my name is Lindsay and today we're going to take a look at factoring in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And before we get into actually doing these questions that are floating there above my head, what I'd like to talk about first is recognizing the a, b, and c values. So for example, if you look at this question, the number in front of the, a, the x squared is the a. So here, our a value is 2. Our b value, since we don't have a number sitting in front of that x, our b value in this case would be 1, which if we wanted to write there, we could, just so that we can remember that b is 1. And then our c value, which is the constant sitting on its own, would be not just 6, but negative 6. We want to make sure that we include the sign. And just like over here, an a value of 2, b value of negative 5, and a c value of 2. And once you understand that, you're kind of well on your way to factoring these. So what we're going to do to factor these is we are going to, if you take a look at my little pink box here, we're going to think of two numbers. And we'll start with this guy first. We're going to think of two numbers that add to b, so in this case that add to 1, and multiply to a times c. So in this case, a times c, 2 times negative 6, that would be negative 12. I'm just going to write that down. Um, when you first start doing these questions, there's nothing wrong with writing this down just to kind of keep yourself in check and then you can stop doing it as you get more comfortable. So I want my two numbers to add to 1 and I want my two numbers to multiply to 2 times negative 6, which would be 12. Sorry, negative 12. Okay. So that's what I need to do, find two numbers that do that. Um, and what I want to do is start with worrying about multiplying. Let's worry about that add to 1 in a minute. 12. Let's not worry about the negative. Let's just start with thinking of two numbers that multiply to 12. And the only ways that I can think of multiplying to 12 would be 1 times 12 is 12. Uh, 2 times 6 is 12. And 3 times 4. So those are the ways that we could get to 12, multiplying two numbers together, but that 12 is a negative. So one of these numbers has to be positive and one has to be negative in order for that to be negative. Now let's consider this add to negative, or sorry, add to positive one. We need to look at these three, figure out which pair is just one apart. 12 and one, that doesn't work. Two and six doesn't work either. But three and four, they are one apart. Since when they add together, they have to add to positive 1, let's make this 4 positive, and let's make the 3 negative. So the two numbers that we're going to use for our question are negative 3, positive 4. Negative 3 plus 4, 1. Great. Negative 3 times positive 4, negative 12. Perfect. Those two numbers do what we want them to do. Let's use them now. So I'm going to switch colors here. Let's... Uh, to do the factoring, now that we have our two numbers, we're going to take this and we are going to write our first value, 2x squared, and our last value. So there's our first value. We're going to write that down. We're going to leave a bit of space and then we're going to write our last value down, negative 6. Just the way we see them. And then we're going to write these two values down. It doesn't matter what order. So I'm going to write my positive 4 first and my negative 3 second. But after those two values, I'm going to write an x. And if you look back up here, this 1x, well, 4x subtract 3x, that's 1x. I haven't changed that question, I've just expanded it a little bit. And now I'm going to do the factoring portion of this. And the way that I'm going to do that is by grouping. So I'm going to put a little box around the first two and around the last two, and I'm going to factor these by grouping. I can't factor them any other way. So hopefully this is this, at this point, uh, factoring by grouping is a bit of a review for you. I'm going to take the 2x squared plus 4x. I'm going to take the common factor out of that. The 2 and the 4, the biggest number that goes evenly into both of those is a 2. This has 2x's or an x squared. This has 1x, so it looks like our common factor can just take 1x out of both of those. So our common factor would be 2x, and then in the bracket, I'm going to put what I would have left over. 2x times what would give me 2x squared? Well, 2x times x would be x squared. And 2x times what would give me 4x? 2x times positive 2 would give me 4x. If I multiplied that 2x in, I would get that line above. I'm going to do the, second, the same thing for the second section here, except my suggestion for factoring by grouping is 
Um, instead of doing what we just did, pulling in a common factor, it's probably a little bit easier if you just repeat what you see in this bracket in this bracket. So I'm going to write x plus 2 over here. And now I'm going to try to think of the number that should go right there in the middle. And if I can't think of one, it's not that I'm necessarily wrong, it's just that that, that question's potentially not factorable. But let's see if we can do that here. So I've got an x plus 2, and up here I've got a negative 3x subtract 6. If I multiply negative 3 times x, I would get negative 3x. Let's check it for our negative 6. Negative 3 times 2. That gives us our negative 6. This one works. Again, if you couldn't do that, it just isn't factorable, and that's okay. It's just not doable then. Now that I've got this, we're back on to factoring by grouping. I'm going to write the bracket that I see as the same. I'm going to write that bracket just once. And then in a second bracket, I'm going to write what I've got left over here. So here I've got 2x subtract 3. And this x plus 2 times 2x subtract 3, that is our answer, factored. So we have just factored that. And something that's kind of nice about factoring is we can actually, we can always do a check to see if we're right. Maybe this is something you would do, maybe not, but it doesn't hurt. The way that we'll check this is we'll write our answer down, x plus 2 and 2x subtract 3. I'm going to multiply those together, and if I multiply those together and I get my final answer as the original question, I know I've done it correctly. So let's do that. So you're either going to FOIL this or however you, you see to multiply this. I'm going to take x and multiply it by 2x, and I get 2x squared. I'm going to take x and multiply it by negative 3, that's negative 3x. And then I'm going to do the same with this 2. 2 times 2x is 4x, and 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And if I simplify that, 2x squared plus 1x, or plus x, subtract 6, there's my answer simplified. And if I look back up here, they match. So I know that I'm right. So that's kind of a nice thing about factoring is that you get a, a chance to kind of match that. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this question, but I'm going to actually clear myself a little bit of room because I've sort of snuck onto this side of the board. So while I clear some room, why don't you take a minute, pause the video, and try doing that question following the same procedure as we did over here. All right, guys. Let's try a second example, and I'm hoping that you have already tried this example on your own, and I'm just confirming, hopefully, that you're right. So here's our values, 2x squared subtract 5x plus 2. The question would say, factor that. We recognize that we're using this method, ax squared plus bx plus c, because there's a value other than 1 as our a value, b value, c value. So let's write this down for ourselves. We've got lots of room now. Let's think of two numbers that add to negative 5. And let's think of two numbers that multiply to our first number times our last number. So 2 times 2. So I want my numbers to multiply to 4. And my suggestion is, is always going to be start with the multiply. Don't worry about adding. Think of ways to multiply to 4. And 1 times 4 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Those are the only ways that I can think of to multiply by 4. But now I need them to add to negative 5. And the only way that I can have two numbers multiply to a positive, positive 4, and add to a negative number, that negative 5, is if both were negative. Because negative 4 times negative 1 and negative 2 times negative 2. That would give us our positive answer, multiplying. And when I add them together, negative 4 plus negative 1, negative 5, negative 2 plus negative 2, that's negative 4. This is the one we want. Add to negative 5, multiply to positive 4. So now, let's take this, and just like the last example, let's put our first value down, our last value, including the sign, and then let's write our two numbers here. Again, order doesn't matter. I could write negative 1x minus 4x, but I could also have written 
the negative four first and the negative one second. In the end, it, it ends up being the same. And I'm going to factor this by grouping. So I'm going to take the first two and the last two and pull a common factor out. When I look at 2x squared, subtract 1x, x is the only thing I can pull out of that. So I'm left with 2x, subtract 1, x times 2x, 2x squared, x times negative 1 would be negative 1x, so I'm right. And then a second bracket, I'm going to copy this first bracket. Because this factoring only works if those two brackets match. So now I've made them match. I'm going to see if I can think of a number that should go in there. I've got a negative 4x and a negative 2. So it looks like negative 2 times negative 2x would give me negative 4x. And negative 2 times negative 1, oh, positive 2. It worked. I'm going to write that bracket that I see twice, only once. And then I'm going to write my leftovers, x subtract 2. Second. And that's my final answer. That is 2x squared subtract 5x plus 2 factored. If you wanted to take a minute and do a check on that one, you totally could. And hopefully you would end up with that as your final answer. So hopefully that clarifies it for you a little bit, guys.